Yeah. Joy said grow is the years I'm close from Patty. Oh, oh. <laughs> 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 I know, it took me so long to open it. Oh, 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 I love yellow. That's the color of our bathroom is going to be. Oh, 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 And every morning, you do this every night. And every morning, down the Mississippi with the steamboats push. Hey, my name is Alice, and my husband's name is Al. We come from Alabama, and we sell apples. Uh, Jerry, that was with the ball bouncing under your leg. All right. <laughs> Sounds like they're having a wonderful time. I wish I could say the same for you. What's the matter? Uh, nothing, nothing. Hey, hey, don't, don't say nothing. I know you, and I know something's bothering you, so, so don't say nothing. I mean, tell me you don't want to talk about it. That I can't argue with. Uh, all right, I don't want to talk about it. How can you say you don't want to talk about it? I'm your best friend. <laughs> oh, Donald, it's the most terrific shower. We got a blender and a can opener, and they're just the right color, too. Oh, sweetheart, we're going to have enough things to furnish a whole apartment. You've never seen so many marvelous things. Don't worry, it's almost... Over. I'll be right back. You know, instead of bringing everything back in here, I was thinking, why don't we just leave it all over at Ruthie's? We can open an appliance store in there. I'll be back in a few seconds with the next load. Hey, Don. Don, I wish you'd talk to me, because if you don't tell me what's bothering you, I'm going to believe what I think is bothering you, and uh, it's going to make me very unhappy to believe it, because it's not too terrific. Jerry, what are you talking about? Uh, you and Ann. Something's wrong? Jerry? I don't think I can marry that girl. Diamonds, daisies, snowflakes, that girl. Chestnuts, rainbows, springtime. Is that girl? She's in so on a tree. She's everything that every girl should be. We have everything we'll ever need. It looks like Macy's truck turned over. Oh, Jerry, you're so romantic. Well, it was just a joke. I mean, I... You got any coffee? Oh, I'll make some. Oh, I'll make it in my new coffee pot. Our new coffee pot. A Guardian electric pot. Oh, it's great, Anne. You know it makes thick coffee for demi tasse too? Yeah, I know. Mm. Hey, I'd like a cup of demi tasse. You don't say you'd like a cup of demi tasse. Tasse means cup. That's like saying I'd like a cup of demi cup. Well, what does demi mean? I don't know. You want a tass of it, though? Please. Ruthie, bring the directions. Um, you can't marry her. Look, Jerry, Jerry, look, I'd rather not talk about it. It's something that just hit me this week, and I'd like some time to think about it, okay? Please. Hit you this week? That's exactly when it hit me, the week of the girl's shower. What are you talking about? Panic! And it usually happens around the time of the girl's shower when you say to yourself and you realize, hey, there's really a, a marriage involved with getting engaged. It happened to you too? Oh, yeah, and the whole thing suddenly starts getting too heavy with the photographers and the flowers. And the... Look. Uh-huh. Oh, what? Oh, you. You're telling one of your jokes. What can she think of me? Oh, Donald, aren't the presents fantastic? Oh, Donald, it's so exciting. I just can't believe my shower's come and gone. All the things I've thought about all my life are happening so fast. Oh, Donald, now tomorrow you're going to go to that photographer, you know. Uh, yeah, right, honey. Oh, and then on Friday we're going to go to the caterers like we planned. Hey, I got a great idea. Why don't I call the photographer? 
I'll take care of the photographer. Jerry. No, no, really. I know a great photographer right next to a caterer. And while I'm talking to the photographer, I'll drop in on the caterer and I'll take care of everything. <laughs> oh, Jerry. Just tell me this. Do you like those little baby hot dogs? <laughs> oh, yeah. Look, look, look Jan, Jerry, we'll handle everything. Thank you. Uh, honey, I I'm sorry. It's really late. I'm, I'm exhausted. Oh, Donald, don't be sorry. It is late. And besides, even though all those presents are for both of us, it hasn't been such a terrific night for you just hanging around with Jerry. Some folks think of me as charming. Oh, Jerry, I didn't mean that. Don't make Anne feel bad. You are boring. Look at this barrage. Just tell me one time I've ever been boring. Tell me once. And you can use now if you want, because I felt myself dozing off during that last sentence. <laughs> uh, uh, good night, honey. I'll, I'll call you in the morning. Uh, there's something I want to talk to you about. Oh, really? What? Uh, well, it'll wait till the morning. Oh, Donald, come on. Stay now and tell me. Come on, talk uh, to me now. No, no, it'll wait till the morning. I'm, I'm really tired. Oh. What? Did uh, you and Jerry have a little fight or an argument or something? Honey. Oh, you know, you're right, Donald. We'll talk about it in the morning just like you want to. And besides, I don't really care if you and Jerry had a fight or an argument. Just so we never have one. Good night. Good night. <laughs> what a perfect night. Sweet, beautiful fiance. Hello, Anne. How'd you know it was me? <laughs> well, I, I recognize your voice. What's wrong? Nothing's wrong. I just thought I'd call you off and say goodnight again. Well, uh, good night. And um, to um, to ask you what it was you wanted to tell me. Anne, honey, please, it's late. Go to sleep, okay? Okay, okay. I know I'm being selfish. I mean, you do have to go to sleep because you have to get up in the morning and go to work, and I don't. Not that I wouldn't be willing to, mind you. But there does seem to be some sort of conspiracy in the American theater to keep me unemployed. <laughs> Good night, Donald. I love you. Good night, Anne. Well, two things. Number one, if you were so sleepy, how come you were wide awake when I called? And don't say you weren't, because I could tell you were by how fast you answered the phone and by your voice that you were. And number two, you didn't say I love you. And number three, what, Anne? Donald, that sounded awful. What's the matter? Nothing, Anne. For goodness sakes, nothing. Now, please, stop looking for trouble and go to sleep, okay? Now, please, good night, honey. <laughs> Could you have hung up on me? What is wrong? 
I told you nothing is wrong. I told you we would talk about nothing being wrong or not in the morning. Now, why couldn't you have left it at that? Why I couldn't have left it at that is unimportant compared to why you hung up on me, which might also be unimportant compared to what it is you have to say to me tomorrow that you can't say to me tonight. Right? Correct? What do you mean, correct? If I fed that paragraph into a computer, it would short-circuit New York City. Was that supposed to be a joke, or are you just trying to avoid the main question? I have no idea what the main question is. The main answer is you should go to sleep, and we'll talk in the morning, okay? Now, good night. Good night. All right, let's just settle this thing once and for all. First of all, you are way too exhausted to talk to me tonight, except you are sitting at your house wide awake. Secondly, you've, you've hung up on me. You've absolutely refused to say you love me tonight. And you've obviously got something on your mind that you are, are so concerned or afraid to say that you can't even talk about it until tomorrow. Now, all of that just leads me to believe, Donald, that there is something wrong with our relationship. Now, that is a reasonable assumption, isn't it? What? Oh, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, sir. I, I guess I have the wrong number. It is a reasonable assumption, though, isn't it? <laughs> C come on, get on. What are you doing here? Where were you going? I'm over to see you. Oh, hooray. I asked a question and I got an answer. Are you sure you don't want to wait till tomorrow to tell me? And come on, now, let's not get stupid about this. Stupid? Stupid? We're going up. Stupid? Go ahead, I'll get the next elevator. And this is the only elevator. Come on, get on. Oh, Tuttle, what's happened to us? What's happened to us? How have I gone in three hours from being sweetheart to being stupid? Oh, you're not stupid. I'll get out of here. Don't you want to wait for the car to stop? No, this is good enough. Come on, we'll talk inside. No, sir. I am not going inside your apartment. We can talk in the lobby or we can talk in the street. But until I find out why I am stupid or why I am not stupid, we are not going inside your apartment. Honey. Honey, stupid? And you're doing a terrible thing by pursuing this. I asked you very simply to let everything wait till the morning. Now, why couldn't you have done that? Because I didn't. Why I didn't, I don't know, but I didn't. And that's it. That's me, and that's the way I do things, and that's it. And it's over. It's past, Donald. So long as I did. What did you want to say to me? I wanted to tell you I wasn't sure we should be married. Now, are you happier? Much. You see, Donald, now everything is out in the open. You're not sure we should be married. I wanted to wait till the morning. Why? Did you think you'd get ready in your sleep? Anne. Donald, it's not a question of whether or not we're ready to get married, is it? The whole thing is, is that you don't think you should be married to me, do you? That's it, isn't it? I thought you'd be off by now. I love up. You're going down? Yes, we're going down. And out. Anne, look, what I'm trying to say... Donald, just answer me one thing. Do you want to marry me? Look, I I've thought about that all week, Anne, and in all honesty, the answer was I, I didn't want to get married. And uh, what about now? I mean, right now, what do you think? Do you want to marry me or not? Well, it's not a question of marrying you. It's a question of getting married at all. All right. It's a question of getting married at all, coincidentally to me. Right this second, Donald. Do you want to marry me? Yes or no? At the second? No. Oh, fine. That's just fine. What if we'd gotten married last night? Just suppose how awful that would have been. Anne. One day, 24 hours after we're married and you don't want to be married to me. Honey, listen to me. Don't touch me. I want a divorce. Anne. Here, take this. You get custody of the ring. <laughs>
Oh, hi. Hi, hi, Anne. Uh, everything all right? Oh, Ruthie. Jerry told me. I just don't know what I'm gonna do. I just... Jerry told you? Jerry told you what? About you and Don and the wedding. I couldn't sleep. That's how I heard you come in. Well, how did he know? Don told him. Everybody knew. I'm the only one that didn't know. Sure, sure, I was at a shower opening presents, smiling. He was on the 11 o'clock news. I don't know what to say, Anne. I just don't understand this whole thing. I mean, I... I love Donald so much. How could he... How could he just stop loving me? Anne, is there anything you can remember that happened? Maybe a mistake. Or maybe... No. Why no? Maybe yes. Maybe you're right. You're right. You're thinking of another girl, aren't you? You could be very right. No, Anne, not Donald. He wouldn't. I mean, Donald's too much of a man. If he found another girl, he'd tell you and break the engagement. <laughs> then you'll find someone else. Someone else? Oh, Ruthie. How dumb can I be? <laughs> Don. Hold it, Jerry. Will you hold it, please? Let me just finish this page. Why? What? Why do you want to finish the page? Oh, Jerry, for crying out loud, what kind of stupid question is that? Don, if that page is anything like these pages, nobody's going to read it. Look, look, I know I made a few mistakes, but I'm going to go back over it later and redo it. Would you take a look at that first paragraph? I always do that. I hit the H instead of the J. They're right next to each other. I know. I once got a Christmas card from you to Harry Bauman from Don Jollinger. <laughs> you did not. And then it was Jappy Jollidays. Look, will you stop trying to cheer me up? I'm your best friend. Should I try to make you feel worse? Look, Jerry, look, don't try and make me feel anything. Okay, just leave me alone. Look, Don, this is really gone far enough. I happen to know you love Anne, so... Look, loving Anne has nothing to do with it, okay? I can love her and still not want to marry her. I mean, I've done it for four years and it hasn't bothered her yet. Now, Don, I didn't drive a car for 18 years and that didn't bother me, but the day I got my driver's license, I would have killed anybody who tried to take it away from that me. That is the most ridiculous analogy I've ever heard. That is idiotic, just idiotic. You know, I think I'm going to hire somebody to be your best friend on weekends. I think seven days of it is too much. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, Jerry. I'm sorry. Well, so then, it's, uh, it's all over between you and Anne, huh? <laughs> yeah, I, I guess so. I guess it is. And uh, I guess you're going to start going out on dates again? Jerry, fuck. Well, how about Anne? I, I guess uh, she'll start playing the fields just like the old days. <laughs> what old days? Well, you had old days. She must have had old days. My Anne? Your Anne? Go on, Ruthie. You go. Come on, Ruthie. It's your turn. Stop yelling. I never played gin rummy You just before. pick a card. Oh, Ruthie. Is an ace high or low? Oh, Ruthie, now I know you have an ace. No, I don't have an ace. I was only asking. Oh, Ruthie, you're yes. not supposed to show me the card. L let's play something else. You're only throwing your cards in because you're losing. No, I'm not. I don't know how to play, so how could I tell if I'm losing? OK, 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 I'm sorry. We'll play something else. How about casino? You deal. Well, how do you play that? I don't know. Just deal the cards. We'll make it up as we go along. <laughs> Hi, Daddy. Oh, Daddy. Honey, what's the matter? What's wrong? Uh, hi, Mr. Marie. Honey, what happened? Did you lose your ring again? Oh, don't worry. We'll find it. No, I didn't lose it. It was stolen? Stolen would be better. Ann, tell me what happened. You want some tea, Daddy? No, I'd rather read a magazine. Ann, will you please tell me what happened? Donald doesn't love me anymore, Daddy. It's, it's just that simple. It's just the engagement is over, the marriage is over. It's, it's just 
It's just all over. Everything. I don't like the word everything. Everything is a bad word, especially for a young person. Maybe the engagement is over, and that's just as well, because he wasn't good enough for you anyway. Oh, yes, he was, Daddy. He was definitely good enough for me. All right. All right, I'll stop being the protective father, or you may break your engagement to me. You, uh, you still love him, huh? Oh, Daddy, of course I still love him. I did something to make him stop loving me. He didn't do anything to make me stop loving him. He broke the engagement. It's not enough. Oh, Daddy, what am I gonna do? What are you going to do? You're not going to do anything. You're a beautiful and intelligent girl and a million-dollar catch for any man. Before the day is out, Hollinger will realize this and come crawling back to you. Oh, Daddy, you really think so? Really? Where is he going to find anyone like you? As stupid as he is, and he is stupid, he's a very intelligent young man, and he realizes that there's no other girl in the world as perfect as you are. Oh, no. I think maybe I'm just too... too silly for Donald. Too... too immature. Too ugly. Whatever it is, I'm just not good enough for him. Stop that. I don't want to hear that. You're my daughter and above that kind of talk. If he doesn't want to marry you, he's a fool. And don't tell me that he's not. I'm your father, so don't argue with me. I dropped by here to tell you I was going to a meeting at the Hilton Hotel. I'll be back for you in a couple of hours. We'll go out and have lunch in someplace. All right? All right. It sounds like fun. Thank you, Daddy. Don't thank me. It's a father's duty to provide food for his child. Bye, sweetheart. Bye. It's not Daddy. It's the kid. Hello, Donald. Look, uh, can I take a stab at something? Sure. Well, uh, last night after your shower, I went home and somebody ambushed me and tied me up and disguised himself as me and <laughs> he talked to you on the phone and in the elevator. But then I got free and I captured him. And I, uh, I found this ring in his pocket. It's yours, isn't it? Oh, Donald. Donald. Hi. Hi, Anne. Oh, I'm, I'm glad to see you found someone else so soon. Oh, Ruthie, it's Donna. I know, silly. I don't know what to tell you, honey. Actually, I do know what to tell you. I just don't know how to say it without sounding like a childish fool. Oh, Donald, you don't have to tell me anything but that you love me again. I never stopped loving you, sweetheart. I admit, I got cold feet there for a while. But well, there was never the slightest doubt that I love you and I always will. Oh, Donald. Oh, Donald. Okay, okay, come on, come on. That's it. Let's have a drink to celebrate the warming of my feet. <laughs> <laughs> I'll drink to that. What made you decide to come back to me? <laughs> uh, same reason Jerry went back to Ruthie and your father went back to your mother. Then you really believe that happened to Daddy, too? Oh, I'm sure it did, honey. I'm sure it did. Only with him, the fear passed before he mentioned it to your mother. As it might have with you if I hadn't been such a pain in the neck. You see, honey, I suddenly thought, as I guess we all do, that marriage may be terrible. But having the girl I love as my wife for the rest of my life is perfect. So when I stopped thinking of it as marriage and I started to think of it as a way to have you as my wife, it became a wonderful thing. You see, the thing that petrified me about marriage was being a husband, not having a wife. Having a wife is a wonderful thing. So that's what marriage will be to me, having a wife, not being a husband. 
<laughs> An awful lot of me has rubbed off on you in five years, Mr. Hollinger. <laughs>